Speaking, uh, Facebook fam, YouTube fam, LOR Radio. Hi, Sister Ima Jean over there. And good morning to all of my little ones, to, to Lakeisha and Esther, both Jessica M and Jessica J. Hey, hey, how you doing? Dami, Suji, Grids, Norms. Hey, Aunt Ruby. Hey, Sandria. Hey, Ricardo. An entire family over there. How you doing, Sir Patrick? How you doing, Pastor Blake? How you doing? How you doing, Pastor Shazad? How are you, Pastor Thornton? How's everybody today? To God be the glory. Norms, Paulette. What's up, Paulette? I know you're usually on here anyway. Whatever time this message reaches you, Sandria, uh, Andrea, uh, my friend, and you know everyone know that I'm praying for you guys and 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 just know that God is in the midst of everything. Hey Chrissy, hey guys, how you doing? This morning uh message is entitled Who is Wisdom? But before we start, I just want to say and I'm going to post this later. I was going to do a separate video, but LOR Radio fam needs to know about this right now. So because tomorrow is the 17th between the hours of 10 and 3 p.m. Uh, if you there will be an in-person job fair at LIU at the Luntley Commons. That's one University Plaza, downtown Brooklyn. You cannot miss it. Put in LIU and you will see the address for LIU, the Huntley, Luntley, L-U-N-T-L-E-Y Commons. It's downtown Brooklyn by DeKalb, so you can't miss it, okay? And it's from 10 to 3 p.m. Uh, be prepared. Dress the part. Bring your resume. And be prepared to be interviewed for a position on the spot. So if you're in need of a job, go there tomorrow. This is being hosted by the Congress, our Congress members, Hakeem Jeffries, uh, Nadia Velasquez, and our esteemed Yvette Clark. Everybody, I think most people know her, and a lot of people do know uh, Hakeem, and there are those who also know Nadia uh, Velasquez, but not a lot of people do. But I um, just want you to know. So get your resumes prepared today. Go dressed. If you're a young man or a young woman, it doesn't matter your age, you know, you put on the tie and, you know, your shirt or buttoned up, you know, just dress presentable to know that you're serious about what you're going after. You know, um, and I want to say this, it, it's not part of the message, but it is now, that um, we have to be prepared. And, you know, I was telling Sister Arlene, hey, Sister Arlene, Evangelist Arlene, I was saying, we have to live prepared, guys. So let's live prepared, dress the part, go prepared. And we know that whatever we want, when we go after it, when we believe God, you know, and we trust him, listen, he's like, oh, what? Oh, you trust me? You believe me? Baby, it's yours. So, okay. Just want to say that I also will also post something else. Um, right now, a lot of people are feeling stressed, overwhelmed, anxious, afraid. You know, there is free confidential help. I'm going to put this. So... It's a lot of information, okay? A lot of information for those who need mental health resources. I'm going to post it also, and I will post the other one. So you will see these. Uh, you can look uh, on my post. Uh, I guess those who are on Face uh, YouTube, you won't see it. So let me just put some numbers out there. You can call NYC 888 NYC Well. Uh, that's 888 692 9355. This is for free confidential help, you know, and they're over, uh, it's a 24 7 line, so it doesn't matter what time of day or night you need this, you can always reach out. And they speak over 200 languages, so you can definitely call them. We know in, a, in, in New York. There's so many languages being spoken. So, um, yes, if you are someone who needs support because you've been harmed by a crime, violence, or abuse, you can reach out to Safe Horizon. It's a 24-hotline, 
1-800-621-4673. That's Safe Horizon, okay? It's an 800 number. If you need support for students and families, those who have gone through a lot during COVID, uh, you can speak to their uh, mental health uh, you can go to the school mental health, that's nyc.gov slash school mental health, okay? And for people who need support with justice, uh, you can reach out at 929-514-0024. All you have to do is replay the message to catch that part of it. You just go back and you'll catch it. And for the, those who are aging, you have the Aging Hotline at 212-AGING-NYC. That's 212-244-6469. So if you know of the elderly who are being abused, you can also reach out on their behalf as well, or if they're suffering from mental health issues, okay? And you can always reach out to your DA's office. I know for sure Brooklyn DA's office have, have has lots of programs, and I'm sure it's the same for Queens and for New York City as well, as also in the Bronx or whatever state you're in. Uh, so, uh, but definitely I can attest, I know there are programs here for those in Brooklyn. Okay, that being said, I pray that everyone stays mentally well and physically well and emotionally well. I mean, you know, when you think about it, when we don't have mental health, we really have no health. And our health does affect our mental health as well. It's, 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 it's symbiotic, guys. You can't get away from it. They rely on each other, okay? So let's take care of body, spirit, and soul by putting our trust in the Lord and letting Him lead. Okay, so I've done the PSAs. So let's get into the meat of the matter. Who is wisdom? Listen, who do you consider wise? Do you consider a scholar wise? Do you consider someone who knows the answers to lots of trivial questions? Do you consider a person who's a deep thinker? Do you consider a person who has great insights? Do you consider a person who knows how to affix the correct knowledge to the given situation? I, I, I just think that all these people are wise, right? Yes, yes. And there are more. There are more. Let's not limit it, okay? I'm just naming a few. That the thing, though, we've been taught to seek knowledge so that we become wise. We've also been taught that as we gain, as we get older, we gain wisdom, okay? There's truth to both statements, but what kind of wisdom does this get us, right? We go to school, and then what? We spend four to eight years getting higher education. I'm not talking about early childhood now. I'm talking about college, you know, getting your, some folks get, well, two to four. To, to eight. Some folks get their associates, others get their bachelors, some get masters, you know, and it goes, and then you get your doctorate, right? And, and we know that for some folks, they sail through school when you have no responsibility. Many of us have gone to school as mothers, as fathers, as spouses, you know, so, you know, the dynamics change a little. Sometimes some of us have had to take a break before continuing our education. Sometimes we've gone out into the work field, gained some experience, go, wait, wait, I don't want to be in that field. Let me change over here. So we have to go back to school again. You know, and all this time, this is costing a lot of money. And then what? Then what? So this morning, its question is, who do you consider to be wise? Do you consider yourself to be wise? And then, here's the question, who is wisdom? There's a reason for asking who is wisdom. You see, I have seen psychologists, I have known psychologists that ended up becoming an administrative or executive secretary. I've seen business scholars become students, uh, teachers, doctor, I remember there's a doctor who is now a fireman, okay? So, 
But who is wisdom and why do we need him? I'm saying many times we go to school and, and you know, especially for those who are in uh, young people in college, in college or going to college, sometimes you're unsure about the path you want to, to go. But I tell you, ask God first. Ask wisdom. What purpose was I born for? Why was I created for in this time? You see, we were all born for such a time as this. So all we have to do is ask and he'll lead us. That way we won't go in, we study one thing and then go, yeah, no, that's not working. Let me go somewhere else, okay? But nothing is ever wasted with God. I, I, I honestly believe that. Trust me, as a child of God, nothing is ever wasted. The, 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 the lessons we learn, whether in school or out of school, he can use that. For the benefit of making us a whole brand new person and a, a better who we are you know what i'm saying good morning oh good morning reverend love good morning oh good morning sister shireen how are you i'm just seeing you guys good morning good morning good morning so god will do that so the word of god tells us bless to those who read the word of god bless to those who hear the word of god being read okay and we apply it so let me just go to the scripture reading for today well the main scripture is first corinthians 1 18 through 31 bear with me okay uh, bishop i won't take you longer than you know don't worry you'll be out there in time okay so the word of god says to preach the message of the cross seems like sheer nonsense to those who are on their way to destruction but to those who are being saved it is the mighty power of god released within us i don't know about you just that right there makes me happy hallelujah glory to god hallelujah for it is written i will dismantle the wisdom of the wise i will invalidate the intelligence of scholars my god what oh you could go to school spend an absorbent amount of money, come out of school in debt. And God said, wait, all that you learn has been invalidated. My God, we're going someplace. We're going someplace. Scripture says, so where is the wise philosopher who understands? Sometimes you have folks who philosophize, but they do not understand what it is they're speaking about. My God, not me. Word of God is saying this. Where is the expert cult scholar who comprehends? You see, you could go to college and not have understanding. My God. Oh, Jesus. Where the skilled debater of our time who could win a debate with God. Now, in our limited knowledge, who could debate God? <laughs> Come on now. Seriously. Hasn't God demonstrated that the wisdom of this world system is utter foolishness for in his wisdom not in our wisdom but in the wisdom of god god designed that all the world's wisdom would be insufficient to lead people to the discovery of himself are you getting it that we're not moving in our own might in our own power as yet you see he took great delight in baffling the wisdom of the world. For by using the simplicity of preaching the story of the cross in order to save those who believe it. For the Jews constantly demand to see miraculous signs while those who are not Jews constantly cling to the world's wisdom. But we preach the crucified Messiah. Whose wisdom are you clinging to today? The Jews stumble over him, and the rest of the world sees him as foolishness. <laughs> My God, mercy. But for those, now there's a but. Y'all know what, what? When the but comes, everything just switches. Ah, hallelujah. But for those who have chosen to follow him, both Jews and Greeks, he is God's mighty power, God's true wisdom, and our Messiah. Hallelujah, glory to God. For the foolish things of God have proven to be wiser than human wisdom. 
and the feeble things of God have been proven to be more powerful than any human human ability. Right here, I'm thinking about who? Sarah. I'm thinking about who? Gideon. I'm thinking about some folks, right? Are, are you thinking about some folks right now? I'm thinking about Isaac. I'm thinking about Samson. There, is a lot, there are lots. Uh, the woman at the well. The woman caught in adultery. Uh, men and women. David. Goliath said, who's that puny little scrunch you send me? I didn't make it up. Bible said it. That Goliath said it about David. But God, look at who David became. What about you? What about me? I'm like, yes, Jesus. <laughs> he, he can work too. That's what? Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. My God. Brothers and sisters, continue reading the scripture. Consider who you were when God, what? Listen, look at God. Consider who you were when God called you to salvation. Do you remember who you were? Yes, I went to school. Yes, I went to college. Yes, I did graduate. Yes, yes, and yes. But I tell you what, best teacher ever, Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Best teacher I ever had the Holy Spirit of God. I am telling you, I am wiser today than when I was in college. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about anybody else. I'm just, that's my testimony, okay? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not discounting my professors. I learned a lot. I've learned a lot over the years. I even still remember my elementary, some of my elementary school teachers who made an impact on my life. Uh, my high school teachers and, and, and in college. Yeah, yeah, I remember there are those who just certain things that I learned from them, not discounting it, but I'm telling you the best teacher I have ever had, hands down, hands up. Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, not uh, uh, not many of you were wise scholars. I'm reading the word of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 31. Not many of you were wise scholars by human standards. Have you ever been discounted? You know, folks have asked me to bring messages. And they've said, I remember a friend of mine, may her soul rest in peace. I don't know what it was, but she had to defend me to say that, yes, yeah, she graduated from college. I'm like, girl, you should not have said a word. I don't even have my diplomas on my walls. If God has given me a word and you don't want to hear from God, not me, but what God has for you. Do I have to have a title for you to hear me speak? But we do this. The more titles, the longer the title, oh, we're ready, we're perked up. And you can have someone, you know, I remember I went to this church and an elder, no, sorry, he wasn't an elder, he was a lay person. He got up and preached. I thought the man was the pastor of the church. I said, look at God, my God. I went out, I said, pastor, that was a beautiful message, but he wasn't. And I went back and I heard the pastor speak no disrespect, but I tell you what, that lay person had the Spirit of God moving through him. Just saying. I'm just saying. We have to know that no matter what we're doing, I'm saying this for the benefit of saying that whether you're in the pulpit or you're in the pew, you as a son of, or a daughter of God, let the Holy Spirit speak to you no matter what. And that ministers on every level at all times. At all times. The Holy Spirit can never fail. He will never fail, sons and daughters of God. And sometimes we're afraid to speak because we're like, oh, I don't have the degrees or I don't have the title. But if he calls you, he equips you. That's it. So who are you going to believe? And whose wisdom are you trusting? Get your education. Get your college education. Guys, go ahead. Get the college education. Do not leave God out of the equation, though. Let him teach you. Let his spirit teach you as you go along. Bless the Lord, oh, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. wasn't part of the message, but it is now. Hallelujah. But God, he has chosen 
those whom the world considered foolish to shame those who are wise. Word of God. And God chose the puny and the powerless to shame the high and mighty. He chose the lowly, the laughable in the world's eyes, nobodies, so that he would shame the somebodies. My God. For he chose what is regarded as insignificant in order to supersede what is regarded as prominent, so that there, are, there would be no place for prideful boasting in God's presence. Who, which one of us can say, oh, you know we love to say, I did it. Oh, I did it. That was me. No, no, no. For it is not from man that we draw our life, word of God, but from God, as we are joined to Christ, the anointed one, and now he is our God-given wisdom, our virtue, our holiness, and our redemption. And this fulfills what is written. If anyone boasts, let him boast in all that the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, just yesterday, I, I had to include this in the message because this just happened yesterday. I saw an entertainment reporter. Um, I think it happened on Monday or Tuesday. I don't know. I was at an event on Tuesday. I, 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 this week has been very busy for me. But anyway, it happened one night this week. So it was either Monday or Tuesday or something. And the reporter... Um, uh, a, a, a well-known, a popular singer asked about, asked the question and the uh, entertainment reporter answered honestly, well guys, can you believe that other entertainment reporters got on her for that? You know what they were saying? Oh, she should have lied to his face and then behind his back say, hey, no, you know, but that's not what startled me. And when I tell you, I, I shouldn't say startled, but it, 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 brings, it brings forth this point, the point that God is making. You're telling me that the wisdom of this world says speak a lie to the person. And you know the part that I said that really I, I, I was like, what? Is when this one particular entertainment uh, uh, and others agreed with her. She said, oh, you lied to them. And behind their backs, you tell the truth. Now millions of people are seeing this. So either which way the person is going to see it, right? Because it's all on air. So come on. What's the purpose of lying to the person when they know they will know you are lying? But this is the part that got me when she said, oh, this is how a professional does it. Are you telling me that the wisdom of this world says that professionalism means that you lie to people? The Bible said, be not deceived and don't be a deceiver. For those who practice deception are themselves deceived. When you practice lying to people, you are going to be lied to. You're, as a matter of fact, you are going to live a lie. You won't even realize you're living the lie. Because there are many, and I'm not even talking about people in the world now. I'm talking about people in the church that can't even see the truth if their lives depended on it. And their lives do depend on the truth because Jesus is truth. I'm just saying what the Lord wants me to say. It wasn't part of the message, but now it is. Hallelujah. You see, God's statement. Who wants to debate God? God de this demonstrated through these entertainment uh, 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 reporters who are suggesting one person stood up and told the truth. And all the others are coming against that one person. And God just demonstrated how the wisdom of the world is utter foolishness. Utter foolishness. Now, if you are a business person, if you're on the receiving end, would you like to be lied to 
for your health? Would you like your doctor to lie to you? Would you like your lawyer to lie to you? Would you like the person you're going in business with to lie to you? Makes no sense, does it? You know, when I was growing up, the idiom or the, the proverb that we used to say, speak the truth and speak it ever, costs it what it will. He who hides the wrong he does, does the wrong thing still. You do wrong when you try to cover up the wrong that you're doing. You're lying. And it's an offense to God. Okay. Anyway, wasn't part of the message, but now it is. Verse 24 tells us, Christ is both wisdom and power. You know, we run around looking for wisdom. We run around looking for power. It's right here. In the pages of the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right there. And the Bible also tells us. He is our God given wisdom. He is our virtue. He is our holiness. And he is our redemption. Come on y'all. Say what? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you. But I am blessed. Highly favored. Greatly. Deeply loved. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Just let me be in my happy place with my Savior. Amen. Okay, all right, let me come back and do what I need to do for Daddy God. Okay, I'm back. Amen. <laughs> so, why do we need God's wisdom and not the wisdom of the world? Well, it's simple. God's wisdom gives us everything. You know, instead of seeking it in someone else's bedroom that isn't yours, instead of robbing and stealing from your boss, or trying to samphy someone, do pyramid scheme or whatever, just 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 be deceitful in any, any which way you can. How about just seeking God? He says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and he shall find. I tell you what, you know there was a day that I needed some money that it exceeded my bank account. This is the truth. I really did. It was quite a bit of money I needed. I had just found out that I needed that money. Well, can I tell you? I went to God. I was think at first I was thinking, now how? I was like, okay, how's this gonna go? How am I who? And then Holy Spirit was like, wait, I'm not inside of you. You say I'm your teacher, right? What? I'm your help, I'm your guide. Why aren't you coming? Okay, so I went to Daddy. I said, Daddy daughter needs some money yeah and then I forgot about it I am being so honest I forgot about it seriously <laughs> it was like I got caught up in a moment of worship I really did I got caught up in a moment of worship I went about my business was doing everything that I had to do you know during that day can I tell you someone came and brought me the exact amount of money I needed I can't make it up if I try. I cannot make it. You, you know who you are. Can't make it up if I try. I am telling you. God is like that. I could have said, hun. I could have said this one. I could have said, you know what? Let me go borrow some money. Let me do this. Let me try to hustle up something or whatever. No. God was like, he says, ask. I don't know about you. but It's such a simple thing. You know, when you say ask, I remember I asked my mom, I used to ask my dad, or ask my grandmother, or ask my husband, or ask my kids. When I need, you know, like, hey, can you do this for me? Can you design something for me? Or help me with this design or whatever. Or can you print it out for me? Whatever. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and they say yes. And I tell you what, even if you ask me, you get a no. Why did you get the no? You don't know. Maybe God allowed you to hear that now so that you will go to him and then he will give you something better. Because when you ask of God, you will always get better than you expect. And that also is the truth. That also is the truth because it's happened. It has happened. It is a trust me, but it's not about me. It's about you today. Amen. Glory to God. You see, it is not our might. It is not our power, and it is not our in intellect, it is not our holiness, and it is not our virtue. We cannot redeem anyone. Who can you save? 
Who can you say? Tell me. You see, when we gain the understanding and we recognize that God is sovereign, he is sovereign, sons and daughters of God. Some of you, I might have sent that song to this morning because listen, I played that song that I've been up. So I didn't even realize what time it was. I have played that song now for like over an hour. The one song, just the one song, just was ministering to my spirit. Since I woke up, I heard it. I was like, ah, okay. God is sovereign. He is sovereign. Listen, he is the owner of of all power therein lies his sovereignty oh my goodness okay he is El Shaddai come on come with me babies come with me sons and daughters come with me little ones I hope you listen listen when you whenever time you get this message because I know some of you are in school some of you are at work you know but 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 whenever time you get this message baby listen Come on with auntie, come on with mommy, come on with sis, whoever you want to see me as. Just come with me. This daughter of God, listen, God has been too good to me. This morning, Bishop was telling the members of LOR Radio that I was sick on my back when I wrote the first book. The first book that I wrote, okay? Second book that I wrote, listen, y'all don't even know. I, I actually wrote, like, I have more books. I just haven't published them yet. I'm so serious and I'm you know I'm like wait you know whenever he tells me to do it I will okay but let me tell you something not only was I sick on my back when I wrote that book I sent it to the publisher when they published it I was in the hospital I was in the hospital for a month I was in rehab for two months my surgeon my daughter could tell you said I died it's in my medical records so there's no hiding that. Huh? But Christ. So when I speak to you, I do not speak to you as someone. What do I have to gain? I don't have anything to gain. Listen, this is about you and Jesus. Because listen, the, the lover of my soul who saved me, I am sharing him with you. It's up to you if you want him for yourself or not. But baby, nobody can take him from me because I know that I know, I know what I've been through. I know what my family has been through and I know who brought us through and I know who's still with us. You see, I know the God to whom I belong. I know the Savior who redeemed me. I know that it is because of Christ why I'm here today. When I couldn't walk, when I couldn't talk, when my family had to turn me, when I was at the mercy and the whim of others. You see, were it not for the grace of God, were it not for the mercy of God were it not for the love of God I would not be here speaking to you I can walk I can run I can speak I can say I can make a joyful noise so I make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the time and and, and, and some folks have said are you so bubbly are you so up listen when Jesus has saved your life and he has redeemed you and brought you back to life what are you what is there for you to worry about what can't he do? And it wasn't, listen, it wasn't like, listen, it wasn't like I did not know about him before. But oh baby, now, mm, my mind is being renewed daily. Daily. Because of who he is. Because of who he is. Not because of me, but because of who he is. When I was there, I couldn't even speak the word. When my family used to come and say, Mom, did you read the Bible today? And they would look at me and I'd say, what, huh? And they would say, okay. And sometimes, no joke, you know, they would take turns and come and read the Bible. <laughs> I didn't even have the whatever to say, hey, they read it, but I was glad. Oh, they were all willing to. And then husband comes from work and he just, he just jumps in there. He don't even ask. He just picks up the word. Read it. Right? They, they were just covering me in the word. And I thank God for that. Because Jesus is the word. Oh, hallelujah. I am telling you. It's my testimony. And I know you have yours. It's Bishop just told. Oh, he went to the doctor and in his blood test it showed that he was exposed to COVID. But he didn't come down with it. 
God covers his children. You see, God is sovereign. He is the owner of all power. The owner, the owner, the owner, guys. All power. <laughs> well, no, this, okay, all right. He is El Shaddai, babies, come with me. He is El Shaddai, sis, he is El Shaddai. God is the destroyer. You know who El Shaddai is? The breasted one, right? Y'all know that, right? He is the God who destroys our enemies. He is called the destroyer of enemies. What is the enemy of your soul today? Call upon El Shaddai. You know who the enemy of your soul is. But what? Is it addiction? Uh, is it depression? Is it anxiety? Is it strife? Is it jealousy? Is it envy? Is it gluttony? What is it? And I don't mean gluttony in, in terms of eating food, but in terms of, I, I should say greed. Is it greed? That's what I meant. Okay, Holy Spirit, greed. You know what? You know what I'm talking about when I say greed, right? Yes. When when you want everything that everybody else has. Well, I, I I watched a show once where there were hoarders. They hoarded things until they could find no place to walk in their homes. That is greed. And for some of them, it was killing them. So, El Shaddai, the destroyer of enemies. God, the destroyer of enemies. El Shaddai, God, self-sufficient. He needs nobody to make him God. You can't be too good for God to be good to you. You can't be too bad for God not to be good to you. Because while we were in sin, when you were in sin, I was in sin. He said, baby, I love you. Come. And he's saying that today. If at this juncture, I will say, if you have not yet given your life to the Lord, I urge you to. All you have to say is, Jesus, I want to know. Like, who is that person she's talking about? I want to know him. I want you. I want you to come and be with me. Yes. That's it. And you, you know, his spirit will lead you to the Bible. You, you know, he's God. I'm just not even stepping in this place. My God. Just speak to me, Jesus. That's all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. El Shaddai is also, now the God who is the destroyer of enemies, the one who has all power, he's the owner of all power, he is the nurturer of babies, my God, like don't you see him, like is it just me that's seeing him, are you feeling vulnerable right now, are you lonely, are you hurt, are you feeling weak, Call on El Shaddai, the nurturer of babies. Babies are vulnerable. If you don't feed them, if you don't change them, if you don't take care of them, if you don't protect them, who's going to? Baby can. Come on. If you feel in such a position, El Shaddai is the very one you need today. So, call on El Shaddai. Because what? El Shaddai is God Almighty. The God with all power. The owner of what? Well, oh, <laughs> all right. Okay, okay. Let me just move on. I know Bishop got to go. And it's 855. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Listen, guys. Proverbs. Let me read Proverbs 3, 13 through 26. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom. If you're sad, if you're depressed, if you're downtrodden, if you feel like, oh, woe is me. I'm under the bottom of the barrel. Get up from under it get your bible out start reading it and find joy because joy is wisdom and who is wisdom it is jesus himself uh, we read it in 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 first corinthians uh one verse 18 on down and verse 24 and at the end of it tells us what that jesus is both power and wisdom he's the power of god and the wisdom of god come on you don't need anything else uh. Man cannot give you wisdom. Your wife, your husband, your children, your boss, no one can't give you what God can. 
But oh, when he gives it to you. Wait, wait. I got a I got something to refrain. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Okay, let me go back to 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 this beautiful scripture. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver. Her wages are better than gold. What? You've got wisdom, baby. You you wealthy. Don't worry, because the manifestation of the wealth will come. Okay? Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare to her. She offers you long life with her right hand and riches and honor in the left. What else do you want? Oh, come on. Okay, 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 okay. She will guide you down delightful paths. <laughs> I don't know about you. I remember my, my, my husband, my daughter, and myself, we went to this uh, arbitrium. And, uh, but I tell you, it was a beautiful place. There were some paths that I was just like, just the path. You know, when God said, I leave you in the path of righteousness. I leave, the, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I tell you, I have walked, we've seen some paths. My family and I, we've gone to some parks. We went to one in Staten Island. We've gone to different parks out of state. Some evenings we would we just drive. And go find a park. Sometimes it's not even in this state. And when I tell you, there are beautiful paths that you just stand and be like, wow. And when you see the path, you can't help but see Jesus. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. It says, He guides you. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Nothing. So let me continue reading. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Do you know? Now you get Genesis in the book of Genesis. Who were Adam and Eve supposed to eat from first? See, they ate. Like, I, I, I know some of you get in this revelation for the first time. And I don't mean about that the tree, the actual fruit was not. But they were supposed to eat from Christ first. But they ate from the devil first. Did you see that? Okay. It's new, right? It's new. It's new. All right, all right, all right. But come on, come on, come on with me. That's a message for another day. All right, all right. So listen. The Word of God says, Wisdom is a tree of life for those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly not loosely when you love someone you're walking across the street they hold your hand or you hold their hands depending on who you are you know you you hold your children's hand don't you your spouses hold your hand right as you're walking or sometimes you you know have your arm around the other one or you know how it is right my gosh when you're walking you're not just you know some days <laughs> Oh, I won't tell you this. Let me not tell you this. Oh, let me continue. Uh, okay. Um, by wisdom, listen carefully. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By wisdom, he created the heavens. By understanding, he created the heavens. By his knowledge, the deep fountains of the earth burst forth, and the dew settles beneath the night sky. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. There is so much. Listen, I could sit here with you for weeks, literally, like even a year. I can see it. I can see it. Oh, my gosh. Woo. But anyway, hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They're like jewels on a necklace. You know how it is when you have a precious piece of, of jewel that costs a lot? Uh, what happens when you lose it? You feel it, don't you? You'd be like, well, where have, you're like, I hope whoever found it makes good use of it or something, right? Okay, all right. How much more when we have wisdom? You don't want to lose wisdom. You want to hold on tightly. Like you want to hold on to your child or your spouse. You, I mean, come on, whoever you value more. Or you may not have a child in your life, but who, you, you know what I mean. 
by his knowledge the deep fountains of the earth burst forth and the dew settles beneath the night sky my child don't lose sight of common sense or discernment we must be able to discern right from wrong darkness from light right truth from lie because i don't know about you but today i find more people tell lies than they tell truth i don't know about you have you ever caught some folks in lies and I, I'm, I'm not talking right here i'm really not talking about people in the world because you know they go lie to you every day all day but you kind of don't expect it with god's children right uh, well then anyway that's how i feel my daughter and i experienced that recently and what i tell you <laughs> she wasn't happy but god anyway um hang the bible says unto them for they will refresh your soul they're like jewels and necklace they keep you safe on your way and your feet will not stumble look at all that wisdom provides sons and daughters of god you can go to bed without fear how many people want to go to bed and sleep at night you want to go to bed and believe no one's going to break into your house. You want to go to bed at night and believe you will wake up refreshed, renewed, and restored. You want to go to bed at night and not worry about paying the bills or an illness or things in your family, your spouses, your children, or who you're going to marry or the person you're dating. huh? You want to go to bed at night and sleep without fear. The Bible says you can go to bed without fear. You can lie down and sleep soundly. You don't need to be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. For the Lord is your security. Well, praise God, he's mine. I don't know about that. If you don't want him, I'll take him. I'll take your portion too. Okay, That's the only thing I'll take from you. You don't want it. I'll be like, give me that portion. Yes. All right. Glory to God. But we all should want him for ourselves. Seriously. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. The word of God says, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Wisdom, sons and daughters of God. Wisdom, minister Dehima. Wisdom, uh, Sandria. Wisdom. Wisdom, Shireen. Wisdom, my little ones. Oh, Esther, we had a good time the other night. Wisdom. Dammy, wisdom, Jess, boat Jess, wisdom, you guys, wisdom, Pat, wisdom, Fresco, wisdom, Jace, my sons, wisdom, Hector, Lenny, wisdom, guys, Lakeisha, brings length of days, gives you health, wisdom, bring witches, riches, rich, uh, I rebuke that, riches, R I C H E S wealth honor recognition you see sometimes we strive for the world to recognize us all we need to do is do and god will recognize us come on he, he give you the best recognition ever come on that's another story pleasantness he gives you joy peace sound sleep contentment he is our security he is our protection for your children that are going to schools, he is their security from COVID, from bullies, from sex traffickers. Do you need more? Do you need more convincing sons and daughters of God that Christ Jesus is wisdom? Because Christ is wisdom. The Bible tells us in John 1 through 4, John 1 one through four in the beginning the word already existed the word was with god and the word was god he existed in the beginning with god he created everything through him and nothing was created except through him the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone do you see now christ is the tree of life he is wisdom Bible says wisdom is the tree of life. God says Christ is his wisdom. <laughs> all right, all right. Do you listen? John 10 and 10 tells us 
that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Wisdom offers long life in our right hand. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Wisdom is Christ. I know it's difficult for you to understand that if you read Hebrew, you would understand it a little better. Because in the Hebrew, there are qualities of God that is in the feminine form. The same is true with his son. That's his son. Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Do you realize they're both, they're all fluid. You cannot put anyone in a box. Jesus is spirit and he manifested in flesh and went to heaven in flesh. My God. He is the word, the spoken Oh Jesus, don't let me start. I can't. Whoo, whoo, I'm trying to end. My God. Are you getting it? I honestly hope you're getting it. Oh, I don't even want to get emotional. Whoo. But when I think of who God is, when I think of who Christ is and his spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God gave us his son, his wisdom, so that our faith, you want to know why God gave us his son? Our faith would be in God himself, the sovereign one the one who possesses all power. Instead, we speak the wisdom of the world. But wisdom was before the world was created. So why then do we settle for something that is subpar? Why do we settle for things that are less than? We speak that. We live that. This is why we live defeated parts of our, our lives defeated and we sometimes we can't see progress by the way okay no no okay jesus not now mm -hmm. so listen god's wisdom the bible tells us puts earthly wisdom to shame to shame every day all day every moment of the day so let me ask you which would you rather have the wisdom that is going to be put to shame or the wisdom that will put the wisdom to shame what are you will willing to boast in how wise you are because of the education you have or because of the wealth you've amassed or whatever else you think The Bible says, boast that you have Jesus. Say, I have Jesus. When people start boasting on you. Yeah, have you ever had people boast on you yet? Oh, I drive this fancy car. I, uh, I have a 10-bedroom home. Or, you know, I have a, I'm an Harvard grad. Or, 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 or my husband or my wife is, is this and is that and knows this and knows that. And all you can say is, well, I have Jesus. And they look at you like, huh? Hmm? What you mean? But I tell you what, they will come back and say, they might either say, wait, tell me about that Jesus again. Or some will say that Jesus thing, but I rebuke that because he's not a thing. He is the ultimate power. Or they will say, I now understand what you mean. See, we don't have to prove God. He proves himself. We just need to love and embrace him and share him with others. That's it. That's all it is. Share him with others. You see, I want to read this to you. And I really have to share this with you. But I'm ending soon. I read, <laughs> you know, I did some extra readings on Solomon. I found a beautiful reading that Solomon sought that we thought we were taught in the King James Version <laughs> that Solomon sought when he became king. No. 
in Solomon's own writing and his own words, he said since he was a child he knew about wisdom and he sought her. And it makes sense because as a teen, as a young man, that when he was asked, what do you want? He said wisdom. He had, and I was like, my God, yes. Teach your children to value wisdom. And when they grow up, even before they grow up, they might just say, wisdom, baby, can be my sister. All right? Oh, understanding, can be my kinswoman, won't you? Yes. Yes. So Solomon sought her. Here is words. He said he sought her because she had nobility to splendor of championship with God. He said she leads him into the understanding of God. He says she teaches him moderation and prudence and yes i know he's passed and he's gone but these are his writings righteousness and fortitude and he said for him nothing in life was more useful than these now that's context Shouldn't it be the same for us? And now that you know who wisdom is, don't you want him? If you're yearning for a wide experience, wisdom knows the things of the old and infers to the things to come. Sons and daughters of God, you don't need to go to a fortune teller or, or, or a palm reader. Or, or the obi person, or I don't know, whatever else terminologies they're being used. You don't need to go there. And you don't need to pay people who are saying you have to pay them to get a prophecy. You don't. Do yourself a favor and pick up your Bible and read it. Spend some time with wisdom himself and he will give you it for free <laughs> not only will he give you the prophecy for free he'll walk you right into whatever you need no cost so you can sleep well at night just put your head on your pillow and go straight to bed be like huh what is morning amen wisdom understands the turns of phrases and the solution to riddles Nothing is baffling for wisdom. You remember uh, Samson? Wisdom gave Samson a riddle. That was Christ. Yes. Amen. See, we, we, we tend, we, 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 Christ is unfolding himself in the Old Testament. Testament. You see, wisdom gives the solutions, shows signs and wonders wisdom knows in advance as well as the outcome of time and ages wisdom already know that covid was going to be and that covid will no longer be wisdom knows the outcome of time and ages i don't know about you but right here i could sit back sip on my tea Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wisdom. When you know that you know that your wisdom is Christ, what do you have to worry about? We worry unnecessarily. We do. We do. I've done it. But I thank God for where you know, if you ever tell the Holy Spirit to keep you in check, he keeps you in check. More than it starts, he goes, uh-uh, baby, come back on over here. You're heading down the rabbit hole. Come on back. He whoops, he just like pulls you back. And as Apostle Ingrid, uh, she brought the message as David. I wish I had a staff, you know, with the with a little hook. And she's like, 
Oh, he hooks you right back into the fold. He's like, come on in. Come on back in. And he loves you back in. See, God is a God of love. He loves you back in. God doesn't even shame us. Or else none of us would be here. You, you think of some of the things you did, some of the thoughts, even as Christians, that some people have. That if Jesus didn't lovingly like, oh, come on. You really going to think that? Where would we be? Oh. Anyway, listen. God knows your every thoughts. He knows your every deeds. He knows your motives. He loves you still, whether they're good or bad. That doesn't change his love for you. Trust him. Wisdom will care for you during good times and bad. When wisdom, I want you to catch this part. When wisdom lives with you, you will have joy and gladness about just welcoming in Christ today. Let wisdom, Jesus, come on in. Come on in. There's a song, come on in the room. Come on in, come on in my home. Come on in my bedroom, my bathroom, my closet. Come on in my heart, most of all. Come on in. Amen. You see, when you speak, When you have wisdom and you speak, scholars <laughs> are willing to wait to hear you speak. They listen to you when you speak. And when you speak, the more you speak, uh, instead of telling on yourself like people with worldly wisdom do, it allows scholars to put their hands to their mouth. Oh my goodness. Say what? That's who wisdom does. Do you love that? You know, Jesus is not finite, sons and daughters. He's not. Don't limit him. Just experience him. When you read the word, just experience him. Take him at his word and experience him. My God, that's wisdom right there. You see, the wonderful news is wisdom is available to every son and daughter of God. You belong to God. Wisdom is automatically yours. He's yours. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. One of the best prayers was introduced to me by Apostle Ingrid, my sister, Ingrid Norton. These are the words of that prayer. I still think it's one of the best prayers. I pray this over myself, my husband, my children, all my children, all my little ones, everybody's name who I mentioned, those who I didn't mention, everybody who I lifted up to Jesus this morning and every day. Listen. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him you must spend some intimate time with him babies you must i pray that the light of god will illuminate your eyes the bible said if your eyes are dark huh? but when light floods in when you allow light to come in illuminate the eyes of your imagination flooding you with light do you know what it is when your body is filled with light you practically will float <laughs> oh my goodness until you experience the full revelation of his hope of his calling that is the wealth of god's glorious inheritances that he finds in us his holy ones who makes us holy wisdom who is wisdom jesus that was ephesians 1 17 through 18 by the way let me tell you that's one of my favorite scriptures one of my favorite scriptures so when i'm going to close and ask you to say a scripture with me at the end 
But let me read to you 2 Timothy 3 and 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. We must continue in the things we learn. In, in these messages, they're teaching messages for me to bring to you. Continue in them. Because have the assurance that Jesus is who he is. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Of whom? Of wisdom. Of Christ, the, 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 the infallible word of God. The word that has been tried and purified on the earth seven times. The word that cannot fail. Come on, sons and daughters of God. It says, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures. That's why we must teach our children since when they're young. Which is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus when we teach our children we won't have to worry they're gonna grow up in it all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect through thoroughly furnished unto all good works praise God you see you can keep struggling in life or you can walk in the power and the wisdom of God who is Christ Jesus Yeshua Amashiach wisdom is the tree of life and the tree of life is Christ himself planted in the Word of God God's wisdom is to be planted in Christ when we are planted in Christ and we become aware of who he is we gain wisdom and become as strong as the flourishing trees that are planted by the rivers of water Bible says our leaves will never wither and will never lack no matter what the season is are you looking for good health and healing to live a long and productive life do you want wealth to care for your you your families your financial needs and to help others are you looking for recognition for the work you do remembering that if your motives aren't right they should be are you looking for joy in dating and in married relationships are you looking for peace in your mental your emotional your spiritual your physical your financial health and relationships how about contentment being satisfied and grateful to God not having to stress over any or everything how about protection for you your families and your possessions how about victory in court cases you already have wisdom who takes care of everything that I just mentioned and even what I haven't mentioned God has given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness and we gain that through wisdom who is Christ all we have to do is become a born-again believer and for those of us who are born-again believers we just need to believe God there is a reason why we're called believers so today I urge you get familiar become intimate with wisdom let wisdom be your confidant love wisdom as Solomon did Solomon called wisdom a her he embraced her wisdom sons and daughters of God is Christ Proverbs 7 and 4 says, Say unto wisdom, what are we supposed to say? Thou art my sister, Bible, and call understanding thy kinswoman. God is not offended to be called El Shaddai, the breasted one. Christ is not offended to be called wisdom and to be referred to as her. The Holy Spirit is not offended to be referred to as our kinswoman it's because of our teachings but those who have been taught correctly 
live a right life and experience life on a different level. We must up our game. I want us to say this. I can't see you saying it, but I would like you to say it. Here we go. I'm going to read it to you before I tell you where it's from. So let's go. I'm going to say it and I hear, when I hear you repeat it, break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. The, those with open hearts are given insight into your plans. Those with hope and hearts today, sons and daughters of God, Minister Kareem, Minister Dahima, well, Pastor, Pastor Kareem, Pastor Gardner, Evangelist Kareem, and everyone over there at LOR Radio. This is taken from Psalm 119 and 130. And as many of you are aware, okay, I'll have to teach that another day. It's too long. Anyway, just know the, the scripture, God will reveal what to you, whatever he needs to reveal to you. So I just want to say to you this morning, wisdom is Jesus. Understanding is the Holy Spirit. They're not offended to be called, to re be referred to in the feminine form. It is in your Bible. If you open it and read it. If you don't want to hear it, then you don't want to receive Christ. Your heart has to be opened in order to accept his truth. The Bible tells us grace and truth is presented to us by grace and truth himself. Jesus, who is wisdom, himself. You can't put Jesus in a box. He's not limited, sons and daughters of God. Come on. So this morning... My last word to you on that is love on them. Love on God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Just love on wisdom this morning. Spend some time. Take some time and love on them because they're already loving on you. You see, the thing is, there's no shortage of love for you where they're concerned. You just need, see, when you love on them, it means you have started to receive that love from them. And what a difference that will make. I, you know, you guys don't come back and share the testimony. One day I'm going to do a Zoom and put you all on it. So you come and you share the testimonies in Jesus' name. So you all have, well, I wasn't planning it, but I heard myself say it. Right, Bishop? So now I'm going to have to follow through. You see how Jesus could sometimes set you up? You're funny, Jesus. All right, amen. So one morning I'm do that and you guys will come in on the Zoom and then you guys can just um, share your testimonies because the bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies in the mighty matchless name of jesus so i pray hey aunt ruby good morning good morning good morning good morning ministers and reverends and evangelists and i see bishop thank you for putting up the scripture hallelujah yes oh when you when you have wisdom you are operating in sound mind yes to, to operate in sound mind, we need the wisdom. We need Jesus, okay? Yes, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, good morning, sis. Oh, my heart is, oh, don't let me start crying on here. It is so good to see you. Oh, praise Jesus. Good morning, Paulette. How you doing? It's such a blessing to see you guys. Hallelujah. Uh, Apostle Ingrid says, we all mess up, but we have to, have a loving God who we once cry out to. He draws us into his arms. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hold on one second. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. I'm on the live. You okay? All right. I'm calling you right back. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So good morning, everyone. And thank you guys for tuning in. 
And for the rest of you, when it goes up on YouTube, those who will see it from that platform, I just want you to know, honestly, from in all sincerity, hear me and hear me clearly. Whenever I come on here, I'm not trying to make things up for you. I'm not trying to be happy for you. I'm not trying to do any of that. I really, truly want you to know that God loves you. I come and I share because God has been this to me and more. And I know he will be even more for you. Honestly, in all earnest and sincerity, he is amazing. He is awesome. And I'm telling you, get to know wisdom today. Embrace her. Wisdom can be my sister. Understanding be my kinswoman. Get a cup of tea or if you drink coffee or, 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 or whatever it is, beverage you want to have with her. Sit. Pick up wisdom. This is wisdom right here. And spend some time just loving her. Loving the word of God. The word of God is Christ. The Bible tells you in 1 Corinthians, you've read it for yourself. Now go read it for yourself. Because maybe you're thinking, no, nah, she didn't read it right. Open up your own Bible and you will see. And you know when you open up your Bible, the experience you have will be your own that no one can take from you. And it will enhance your life. So go forth and have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Know that I do love you. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, wisdom loves you, loves you, loves you more than anyone else in the world can. You are loved greatly. Now go loving them. Have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. And thank you all for joining. All righty. Be blessed. Amen.